Okay, let's consider drawing free body diagrams of some different situations. A free body diagram is basically a vector diagram that shows all the forces that are acting on a particular object. So, in part A, a ball is thrown downward at the ground. You could imagine that you're playing basketball and dribbling a ball and it's at the instant where you're pushing the ball down towards the ground or maybe you're playing volleyball and you're going up to spike the ball and so you're hitting the ball down towards the ground. So, part A, here is the ball and if we kind of physically picture what's going on, here is your hand and it is pushing that ball downward. Now, a free body diagram just shows the forces so then if I redraw the ball here, and I'm going to draw a little coordinate system, the same way we did in the last chapter when we were dealing with uh, vectors of displacement and velocity. Now I'm going to label the forces. Well, remember there are contact forces and field forces. The field force that we're typically going to run into right now is the weight. And so that's always acting downward. So I have a downward force. I'm going to label that F sub G, and G stands for the force of gravity. This would be the weight of the ball. That's the only field force that we have acting. Now, contact force, the only thing that's in contact with the ball is the hand. And so if we think about what the hand is doing to the ball, that hand is pushing the ball downward. So then we will have another force. I'm going to start it there at the same location at our frame of reference and I can call this force hand I could call this force applied either way would be fine kinda of squished in there but that's the applied force there aren't any other things in contact the ball is not being supported so that is our free body diagram for part A two forces acting on the object now part B a car that's being towed by a tow truck. Well, let me kind of diagram our physical situation. Here's our car. And it's going to be attached to a tow truck. So we're not concerned with the forces that are on the truck just the forces that are on the car. So if I redraw our car, and again, draw coordinate axis, and that's where all my forces are going to start. Field forces. Well, the only field force I have acting is the weight of the car, straight down towards the earth. So F sub G, the weight of the car. Now I look for contact forces. Well, one thing that is in contact with the car is the truck. And it's pulling along that chain. And so I'm going to draw a force here. This force I could call either force of the truck or applied force. So that takes care of the truck. Now the other thing that's in contact with the car would be the ground. The ground is doing two things. It is supporting the car to keep the car from falling. And so that support force would be the normal force, F sub N. And then because it's likely that the, the truck is moving the car, there would be some frictional force between the car and the road. And so then I would put a frictional force or a resistive force. So then on this, in this situation, one field force, gravity, and then two things are in contact with the car, the truck and the ground. So that contact force of the truck, the applied force, and then the contact forces from the ground, a support force, the normal force, and a frictional force that is opposing that motion. So in a free body diagram, always think about what's in contact and what field forces that you, do you have, and then draw and make sure you identify those forces with symbols. Ponder physics.